Welcome back to the broadcast. This is Inside Politics, Kenya's premier Sunday morning political broadcast. We will, con we will uh, conclude with the, the issues bedeviling the BBI and the handshake later on. But for now, let's uh, switch gears and uh, talk about the uh, recently concluded by-election, Thursday's by-elections in Kabuchai and Matungu and, of course, uh, several other civic wards. Uh, of course, we saw ANC retain the Matungu seat through uh, Nabolindo and uh, Majimbo Kalasingo Ford Kenya also winning the seats in Kabuchai back for Ford Kenya. Uh, this has got tongues wagging. There was, uh, uh, there was uh, some, some concerns over, over if Musalia Mudavadi lost the Matungu seat. What would that mean uh, for Western Kenya politics? Let me begin with you, um, Javas Begambo. The win in Matungu for Musalia, the win in, Fort, in Kabuchai for Fort Kenya and Moses Batangula. What does it mean from where you sit for Western Kenya politics? Is the Mulembe nation finally finding that um, unity formula that has been uh, talked about so much? Well, if at all one would conclude that the outcome of the Matungu by election and the Kabuchai by election could point to the ultimate realization of the elusive Luya unity, then I think arithmetics is not making any sense. Reality is that it took so much of a struggle, critical competition, for ANC to retain that seat. Yes, we need also to appreciate that they had a very fine candidate, a very young candidate, yes, uh, most prominent amongst the clan from which she's extracted, the Abashitata clan. And ANC also being fairly popular, much more than these other parties on the ground and within the community. But looking at the kind of struggle that ANC mounted, the spirited struggle that also ODM mounted, and the challenges, for example, even from UDA, it shows that it was not a walk in the park. And so much the case even in Kabuchai. As a matter of fact, we need to agree that it would have been a big shame for Wetangula to lose Kabuchai to UDA, for instance, or even uh, ANC to lose the seat to ODM through uh, David Warren. And this just points to some reality that now Wetangula and Musalia must come alive to, that one, unity will remain elusive as long as we have got various parties originating from the Western region, and that the people still, the 6,000 people who voted for UDA, a new party and a new entrant in the region, points to some reality that on the ground, the voters still are not homogeneous, have not yet bought into the idea that their political leaders at the top are united because they still speak of different voices in different tongues. They still have not harmonized the thematic issues that correspond with the needs and the interests of the Mulembe people. And so it is time for proper planning for Wetangula and Musalia. And if at all they want to speak authentically to the issue of the Luya unity, then they must be united right from their political hearts and see how to merge their political houses not having multiple political houses in the name of political parties and speak of Luya unity. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Daktari, you're an NC insider, so to speak. <laughs> Were you worried at any point that the ODM candidate would upstage the NC's uh, candidate and give credence to, to Raila Odinga and Weekly for Paranya? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, a problem that has taken many years to resolve cannot be resolved overnight. It's a matter of fact that among the Abaluya of Western Kenya, many other parties have found inroads. So much so that some of the outsiders, and I use this word outsiders with a clear conscience, have even bragged that they are more Luya than the Luya leaders. As long as we have the history of this country from 1963, then we must accept that our politics are run on the basic of ethnic divide. And if we proceed that way, therefore, we must agree that the best solution for this country will come when all the 47 tribes sit on the table 
and talk as tribes. Mm -hmm. That is the honest conversation in this country. And with that in mind, therefore, I absolutely agree that the Luya issue is important. However, it has been overplayed. It has been overplayed because when you have two, three presidential candidates within the Luya land, it's a big issue. When you have so many candidates running in the Agikuyu land, it's not an issue. Honorable Martha Karua, Honorable Peter Kenneth, and many others, Mukaru Nganga, at one time or the other, have vied when others were vying in Kikui, but that was not an issue. And that is precisely the point we are making, that for you to have a stake in this country, you must have as a tribe a kingpin. That is actually what Javas is alluding to. So that today, when you speak of politics in this country, if you are to say, on this table now, we want all the tribal leaders, you, the Kalenjin will have theirs straight away. The Agiku will have theirs. The Lu will have theirs faster than anybody else. The Lu will have trouble. And so it is nothing wrong for us to say that for the first time, the Abaluya must now come together as a community if you have to get your interests addressed on the table. I mean, when Honorable, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta goes to Mount Kenya and switches to the native mother tongue and says that a good guest is one who comes through the door and speaks to the patriarch, what is he saying? He's simply saying that I am the Police. patriarch of the Agikuyu community. Why isn't he embarrassed about it? Why should the Louis be embarrassed when they do that? So in my view, there was a real threat that Honorable Raila Odinga would have run with the prize for two reasons. Our leaders have been supporting him all along and in the process helping him to entrench in Western Kenya. So much so that he can lay claim to the popularity of Western Kenya without necessarily those leaders. He has right. said it himself. Two. Is that changing? It you think is. it's changing? If you look at the ODM MPs in 2013, and you look at the ODM MPs in 2017, there is a change, and that is bound to change. However, I do not think that I want to look at the glass as half empty, as Javas is putting it. What has happened in Matungu was very difficult for Horeb Musalia Mudawadi, it's true. It was very difficult for uh, Moses Wetangula, it's true, in Kabuchai. But if the people on the ground would learn a lesson, if the people of Western Kenya would understand mm -hmm. that a vote for leader X means a vote for his tribe, they would change. And there should be no shame at all in all right. proclaiming that. Finally, finally, uh, uh, Ben, when, for instance, after the handshake materialized and Honorable Wetangula was removed from his position, who was put in his place? Tribes matter in this country. Let's not cheat ourselves. Right. Let's be honest. All right. Mm -hmm. Rosalind, yes. Kanu, Waipa, ANC, and Ford Kenya have had this loosely uh, established coalition. What does this wins for Ford Kenya and ANC win, win for, uh, mean for that uh, alliance? Okay, Ben, from where I sit, I don't think uh, what we saw in the by-elections um, really give us the, the position that the Western Kenya uh, leadership has taken. Mm. Because if you look at 2017, and if you look at the recapture of Kabuchai by Ford Kenya, they won it in 2017. If you look at the Matungu by election, ANC won it in 2017. Now, if we narrow down to Matungu, and we look at the election outcome of 2017, mm -hmm. the winner, who is the late Justice Murunga, won with 18,000 votes. If you look at the person who followed him, was uh, Were with 10,000 votes. If you look at Nab uh, no, Nabulingo followed with 10,000 10, votes. Were right. followed with 8,000 votes. Now, if you look at uh, the Thursday's outcome of elections, then you find that the difference between Nabulingo and uh, Were was only 3,000 votes because he got 14,000 and Were got 11,000. Now, that margin, if you look at it in terms of 2017 and, and, and the by-election, then you can see that it has quite narrowed. So we cannot actually say 
that the Luya leadership is col uh, consolidating their backyard and yet uh, and rigging out the others like Raila and maybe UDA that is now was trying to make inroads. Mm -hmm. I think what we need to ask that if they had consolidated their votes, then we would have seen a shot in the margin of the votes that the winners, the, uh, the MPLX, uh, got in the by-elections. So for me, from where I sit, this is, I think, uh, still an open conversation for, okay. for the Luya leadership. Because since time immemorial, and if you look at uh, during the times of Musalia's father, uh, the late uh, Moses Modamba Mdavadi, I think he was the only one who came close to bringing the Luya leadership together. And even well, during... Yes, Masinda um, Mulero and now Mdamba. Um, now, if you look at the time, the stink that I was in Western Kenya region, right. the leadership of Western Kenya that was led by uh, Cyrus Jirongo, Muskari Kombo, Muhisa Kitsui, these, uh, and uh, even Francis Atwoli, these are leaders who have actually organized meetings after min, uh, meetings to discuss the elusive Luya even unity. The and there are times that they've come up with uh, uh, takeaways, including even how to empower power the local region there was even a time they discussed i think a three-day meeting at uh, masinde mliro university and you remember one of the outcomes was to even establish uh, a bank for the region and it just remained a talk so uh, what he was saying that until we see the Luya community rallying together and voting as a block like we've seen in Nyanza, we have seen in Rift Valley and we've seen in Central, it will just still be an elusive Luya unit. True, and that's where we are headed. Okay. <laughs> Do you think they are, the, the Western Kenyan nation is coming close to that? I think Ben, and to help my senior doctor, Lutalala, they are not diagonizing the, the real problem. They are just looking at the color of the disease and not saying why the disease is there. There is one thing that if they are to succeed, actually, their biggest challenge in Western Kenya in why Raila Odinga, the positions that Raila lost in terms of members of parliament, did not go to Musalia Mudavadi, it went to Jubilee. That is the other reality there. And if you were to compare who made more inroads in Western Kenya between Raila Odinga, Mudavadi, and Jubilee in the last election, Jubilee did, I, I think, the increase in terms of percentages was, I think, 7%. And the members of parliament, it was 4 or 5 that came more. And that is why they demand that majority whip seat, which is their right. But when we come back to the obtaining discussion currently, right. why it is very difficult to unite Western as a Mulembe nation as one. There is one thing that you have to ask yourself. In, in terms of population, Mulembe nation is number two. But when it comes to voting, when you look at the, when we now list voting as, as, an, ethnic, as an ethnic thing, Mulembe I think is number three or four, for a simple reason. People in Mulembe nation do not register as voters. I don't know why. But there is the other question now that they must answer. The other regions, Mount Kenya, Rift Valley, and Nyanza, in one way or another, these regions have tested their real power. And it is the real power that gives them an incentive to fight for power. In Western Kenya, when you talk about power, people have not tested real power. The closest they have come to real power is those, uh, what I'll call the Clark kind of vice presidents we had, Mudiawori, those were not real power. But ask yourself, if a region has tested real power, that is why, even in the current scenario, those small tribes in the county level that got governor, right. it will be difficult to, to remove them from there <laughs> for a simple reason. They have tested power. They're motivated. They know why the people fight for power. T tell but me this. Tell me this before, before, before I let you go. Um, with the right of reply. Yes, I, I, I I'll do that. I don't agree with you. When you talk about Jubilee making inroads in Western Kenya, we're obviously talking about the Deputy President, William Ruto. Uh, UDA was in in all these yeah. by-elections. Yeah. It it's, it's actually his first by-elections, mm -hmm. and they lost. What do you, th do you think uh, that uh, means? If I were to ask myself and think, why UDA lost? First of all, when discussing those by-elections, all the way from even Nakuru, where it was, I don't think those were by-elections then. Those were a show of who has more wounds. <laughs> that is the first thing we must agree. Because Cape in Tuba. a by-election where we <laughs> see more tear gas than voters, how do you call that a by-election? You did Any it. Election, Jubilee gave us more tear gas against Nasser, no, but you won, and you're happy. Let me just finish, Ben. 
any election, <laughs> why, why do you say an election was credible? It must be transparent. Yes, the process must be very viable. Right. The, 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 the peace is a part of a, a center of that. But True. why, let us go back to the UDA question. All right. If I were today to be a UDA member, my take will be this, and let me say it as it is. One, when you are a new party, you cannot go to a region like Matungu and Kabuchai and win an election because there is one thing, Ben. People need to know which party is this in the first place because there is still a confusion. William Ruto is still a member of Fair the police, a deputy points. president. Uh -huh. So for me, I will take this as a good okay. showing for the party. Right. But the lessons they learned, one is they must now put their cells in order in Western Kenya. Right. They know, they have learned a lesson. People now know that there is a brand known as right. Wilbarrow. Wilbarrow. It is them Before to Before I come on. to you, uh, Daktari and, and Roslyn, Jarvis, your thoughts? Then to be fair, I would pose this question. When you look at uh, Kalasinga, whose other name is Devolution, Majimbo, in Kabuchai, was he voted for on merit by way of his character, manifesto, and ambition and focus? No, the people of Kabuchai voted for Majimbo Kadasinga through the lenses of Moses Masika Wetangula. When you look at the Nabulindo candidate of NC in Matungu, he was not voted for on the basis or on the merits of his character, focus, vision, and mission. He was not voted for on the basis of ANC and the kind of carrot that Musalia Mudabadi was positioning for the people of Western and for the people of Matungu. If at all, the candidate Nabulindo then was to be voted for on merit on the basis of character, vision, and what he is to deliver, which actually did not even make to the surface of the deliberations of that contest, then we would say that the, the quality of the candidates is what was critically considered. But here, we were looking at one, the issue of the Luya unity being peddled, the issue of the candidature, the presidential candidature of Musalia Mudavadi, that was w something that was on the table and not this can the individual candidates who are running. And so looking at it realistically, we say that it was the perspective of the 2022 general election that led various voters to the ballot boxes to vote for the candidates who won. And the other thing is that the people, and here looking at even what uh, 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 Koriri is saying, is that the people of Western have never really bro been brought to the realization of the economic significance of somebody being in power from that region. If at all the elusive Luya unity is to be achieved, then the Luya leaders would put critical focus on socioeconomic issues that are of substance to the people of Western so that they get to appreciate that if they have somebody on the house in the hill, then it would translate into progress, social, economic, and even political, for the benefit of the entire region, All right. which actually is not the case. Let, let, let me go to uh, Daktari and, and to you. You're both disagreeing yes, with a lot of what's been saying. You first. Uh, some important points. He's an intelligent young man, but as I said, <laughs> sometimes it's very rough. You know, among the lawyers, we agree that we have a problem. Mm -hmm. And this name called Mlembe is our problem. The lawyers believe that visitors must be welcomed, we must be at peace with everybody. Our neighbors right across, if you go there, they don't believe in Mlembe. If you don't tell their line, they'll stone you. <laughs> so what has been positive for us has become our dilemma. It is like the rhinoceros home. Number two, we have a problem in as far as voter sensitization is concerned. And he has a point when he says that the bulk of our people don't register. Mm. And that must be our problem to solve. Number three, he's right when he says that Waluya Hawajaonja asali wongo. Nikwe. Lakini, we are 47. Sisi ya baina sabaha, wata wataonja. Ukweli ni kwamba. And he's right that yale makabila mawili ambayo yameonja utamu uongoze hawaja mm -hmm. babangu out of 59 years of independence the gikuyu have been in in 58 years either as presidency or deputy out of those 59 years the kanjin have been there either as president or presidency for 46 years 
So he has a point when he says, because what the Kalenjin learned has seen for those what, six years gives them the motivation to fight tooth and nail the way they're fighting. And the same applies to Agikuyu. But it's not fair to say that we all must test, because we are 47. By what time will you all 47 test? Ukweli ni kwamba, and this we must never run away from it, that people should stick to their regions. <laughs> because he derides us here that we, we, don't, we don't reach as voters, but his kingpin comes to our area and says that he's giving us money, and he gives us money, but we don't vote for him. So the problem is... If you stick to your regions, where will the 50% plus one come from? Sorry? Where will the 50% plus one come from? And you come to the national table. That is what is happening. Have we been talking about the handshake? The coalition. The two gentlemen came together. All right. Why is Honda Brian Odinga the man to beat? Either way, right now, his people are threatening Uhuru and telling them we can go back to the streets. Why do they have the nerve to do that? Because they know the moment Raila goes to Kamkunji, every Dholuo speaker will be ready to die because Raila Odinga has said. That's what you want to see in Western Kenya. That's what you want to see in Agikui land. That's already there. And, and, and Ben. I have the authority of Her Excellency and Mumbiwai Guru, the governor of Kirinyaga, who said on public TV that the MCAs in Kirinyaga have demonstrated the innate DNA of the Agikuyu people, the Mount Kenya people, that you can rent them, you can Can't lease buy. them, but you cannot buy them. All right. That they'll always vote for their interests. The Agikuyu are the wisest political animals in this country, followed by the Kalenjin. The Luyas are foolish. I hope they're listening. <laughs> I hope they're hearing. But I have the final word. Uh, you disagree with, with Javas when you say that uh, Kalasinga and they won because of the political clout of the 2022. You disagree? I disagree because I think the political class or the political leadership is just an added advantage. Remember when the, the late Mat uh, Matungu MP passed on in the 2017 elections, you could see the margin that Nabulingo and the late had. So again, it, o it also boils down to the popularity. If Nabulingo was an ODM, Nabulindo was an, Do. yes, if he was an, an ODM candidate, I am sure ODM will have carried the deal. Listen to that. Listen to that. And again, if you go to, if you <laughs> go to Kabuchai, plan? if you go Listen to Kabuchai, to uh, Majimbo, the person I know, is not new to politics. He's Actually, somebody he's who been has been, been candidate uh, twice. Po uh, uh, politics. He mm -hmm. has been a councillor. So he was already a guy who had network. So if but he's also on Wetangula's home. Yes, and he's also right? Wetangula's home. So all this went to his favor. And two, uh, when uh, uh, Council uh, Kipchumba talked about uh, Luya people not testing power, I don't think that is true. Nyanza have been in op opposition since independence. No. In Western Kenya, let me just say that, in Western Kenya, the Bukusus and the Maragolis have never voted together. And that is why the Bukusus will hold top government positions and the Maragolis will hold top government positions. If you remember in the past, we had the Attorney General who was in government for over 20 years coming from Western Kenya. The Vice President, uh, Moody Awori, was from Western Kenya. The late Kijana Wamalo was a Vice President from Western Kenya. Musalia Mudavadi was a, a, a Vice President from Western Kenya. And they have held top government positions. So when we talk about not testing power, I think Western have tested power only that they know how sweet it is to be in one basket. So they make sure the, both sides uh, trade in to see which side will actually be, win which side of government. All right. The puzzle continues of the, to use a cliche again, the elusive Luya unity, but we continue to keep, keep an eye on ben what's ben happening in there. <laughs> that must stop. Must stop. <laughs> the cliche. All right. Let's take an hour quick commercial break here on Inside Politics. When we come back, we will stick to the by-elections on Thursday, but focus on chaos and violence that was witnessed in almost all the electoral units that were having elections. We did see some uh, lawmakers being arrested in Kabuchai, four of them. Former Cabinet Secretary Rashida Chess also arrested after being seen on camera slapping an IBC official. The National Cohesion and Integration Commission saying that they will do more than that, that they want the ACC to press charges. We'll get into that when we come back. Stay with us.